Hi guys, I'm Joe Katz. Thanks for tuning into the Katz Walk. I've got a very special guest today, Ferdinand Kingsley. He is the son of Sir Ben Kingsley. He is in a new movie on Netflix called Mank with Gary Oldman, a fantastic movie. He is going to tell us in our interview everything about growing up with a famous dad and telling us all about his very cheeky style for this very British interview. Stay tuned. Ferdinand, hello, how are you? Hi, Joe. I am. Hello. I'm plodding along. I'm all right. How are you? You're plodding along. Fabulous. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, I uh, thank you so much for coming on my show. I'm thank so excited to have you on. And it's um, what time is it in uh, London? It is nine minutes to six p.m. So I have wow. uh, a drink lurking for oh, nine look. minutes time. And I have my um, I have my morning coffee because we're still oh, in the morning over here. Isn't that lovely? What kind of uh, what do you go for, please? What kind of coffee do you go for? Um, actually, today I'm doing an espresso uh, pecan. Um, it's a pecan uh, flavor. It's for the holidays. Oh, oh how sickly! I love it. <laughs> you weren't expecting that, right? <laughs> I kind of was. <laughs> oh, you were. You were waiting for the <laughs> yeah. pecan. Yeah. So you go by Ferdy, is that right? Yeah, I, I call my I introduce myself as Ferdy, but I um just I always have done, but and any variation of some of the letters from my name will will do just fine. So <laughs> you live in what part of London are you in? Not like I, live, I know where it is, but let's just make like a do. How well do you know London? I don't. In Paris. <laughs> I live but it sounds good. <laughs> I live in southeast London in a place oh. called uh, Forest Hill. Um, oh. which kind of, uh, the, the, the clues in the name is nice and leafy and hilly. Oh, it's wow. lovely. Beautiful. Yeah. It's really So nice. where did you really grow? Good. Did you grow up in that area? No, I'm, um, I'm a Midlands boy. So I grew up in, um, Stratford upon Avon because as, as the, the child of a theatrical family, I'm, um, an absolutely, uh, abominable cliche. I, I, I grew up where Shakespeare came from. Um, mm. and, uh, I lived on the river there next to the theater till I was 18. Um, and then I came to London to go to drama school. Wow. So that, yeah. so obviously, so if people don't know, um, your dad is Ben Kingsley. Yes. Yes, he is. Um, and that would be, uh, be good if that was, if that was news to me, wouldn't it? If I was like, yes. Oh, really? Yes, Ben really? Kingsley. Oh, he's <laughs> That's yeah. why we that's why you organized this discussion, was it? You needed to break some news to me. Yes, yes. I wanted to tell you who your father was. Um uh so that's amazing. So you grew up in a very so your mom was a director, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom it, it, I'd I would say I want to say is, but you know, she's uh she's had a bit of well, I mean she's she's a woman in this industry, which means that um people get bored of you too quickly. So she's, she's semi-retired, but not really retired. She's a theater director. Yeah. Wow. And so is that how she met your dad? Yeah. They met under quite, they met under quite strange circumstances. Um, so they met, it was 1974, three, four. And, um, my dad was playing Hamlet at the Royal Shakespeare company. And my mum was the director's assistant. Um, the director was an, an amazing lady called Buzz Goodbody, who was uh, really groundbreaking. She was, I think, the first woman ever to direct at the, at the RSC. She was um, really blazing a trail. She was radical in her work. And, and uh, it, was a, it was a really sort of radical modern production of Hamlet. And um, so mum, mum was Buzz's assistant and her flatmate. And um, re really sadly, I think, the night or two nights before press night for opening night of Hamlet and um, Buzz took her own life. And, oh. um, and so my mum took over the production with, uh, with Trevor Nunn, who was the artistic director of the, of the RSC at oh. the time. And, um, and that's how my parents met. Really? Very bizarre circumstances. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And a very, and so obviously a very strange play to be, uh, to be doing in the wake of a death, you know, a play about, about death and wanting to not live. So oh that was, uh, yeah, pretty heavy. That's intense. 
Wow. Yeah. And then your mom always stayed in directing, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So she's, I mean, she she basically speaks in Shakespearean verse. She, is, she's, could, she could be an authority on it. She could go on any quiz show. <laughs> that sounds reductive. Wow. But she's, yeah, she, mom, mom's one of those people that could have been an academic if she wanted to. Um, she's in, 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 incredibly clever, but is uh, encyclopedic when it comes to Shakespeare. Wow. And so then you studied that as well, right? Mm. In school? Yeah. I, well, I, I, I studied, uh, I, I, well, it was an acting degree at, at, at yeah. the Guildhall School of Music and, and Drama, um, which is, I guess, what they, what they call a classical training. Um, mm -hmm. But it, uh, that makes it sound like we just sort of went around in, in doublet and hose, <laughs> only talking in <laughs> verse. Um, yes. But we only did that some days. No, we, we, it was, it was a, a really intensive all round three year training. It's an amazing drama school, uh, very small year group. And, and so, yeah, we did, there was a lot of Shakespeare there, but not exclusively. Wow. And then, so when you, okay. So when you were a kid, I just want to, and I, I want to get into a whole bunch of different things. Cause I want to mm. talk to you about your new show that's coming out, um, mm. on Netflix. So I'm excited about that, but I'd like to know who you are. And I just want to understand like where you came if, from. And if you find out, let me know. I will, I will write you a whole, um, Please. letter. If you I work out I who I know. am, I'm, I'd yes, be excited I'll, to find I'll, out. I'll get up to you. Um, yeah. so then when you were a kid, um, mm. so then your, uh, your parents split up at, when you were younger, right? Yeah. Yeah. When I was about four, three, four, you know, as with a lot of breakups, I don't think it was a like <laughs> thing. So one yeah, of those, yeah. it, it, you know, took a couple of goes. It happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so they they broke up when I was when I was four. So I don't have many memories of them together. I have a, like a couple of Christmas memories, um, like uh, uh, well, one Christmas memory, if I'm being honest, uh, um, and like a flash of of visiting dad at work a couple of times. But um, but most of my memories, most of my sort of knowledge of my parents is of them as separate people. Mm -hmm. Which is which is strange to a lot of people, but it's weirder for me to imagine my parents together than it yeah, is yeah. to to imagine them on, on their own. When I see pictures of them together, I'm like, oh, how do those guys know each other? But of course, they're, they're, <laughs> how do they get together? Friends. Yeah, yeah. Well, hang on, hang yeah. on. Do, do these guys know that they used to kiss? Um, <laughs> do it again, you guys. Do that thing. <laughs> yeah, for all time's sake. Um, yeah. Wow. And so when you were a kid, so then did you see your dad a lot during the, yeah, like when I did, they I split did. I mean, there, there was, there's the sort of, you know, the, the, uh, the process of dealing with, with divorced parents in general. Yeah. So, you know, like weekends and that, but then it was complicated of course, by dad being dad and dad being away, um, working so much of the right, time, right, um, right. which, uh, I, I look, I look back on with the benefit of, you know, um, adulthood and years under my belt and, uh, therapy and think, Oh, yeah. that, actually that's, that's tough. You know, not, not, not seeing, not having immediate access to one of your parents is, is, is tough. Yeah. Um, so he was, he was off around the world a lot. So it wasn't through any choice to, uh, to not be there picking me up from school every day. It was just the way it was, is what I sort of, right. Um, right. It's like what you got used to. Yeah. It's what you get used to, but then, you yeah. know, in, in a way you sort of, so you feel like you don't, you don't miss what you don't, what you don't, don't have. have. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but then looking back, I'm like, oh, actually I, d I don't really, if I'm ever lucky enough to have kids, I'd have to make sure I knew how to, um, uh, do dad stuff like in the day to day yeah. realm, because right. dad is an amazing dad and a wonderful dad, but he was, he was a dad that, that, uh, uh, like I said, it wasn't, it didn't do the school run every day because that, right, that wasn't right, the, uh, right. the shape of, of parenthood with us. Yeah. So when you were a kid, did you think I want to be an actor or did you think, I think I want to be a dentist or I don't know. I want to be, I mean, no, I wanted to be a spaceman. I wanted yes. to be uh, a football, a soccer player, um, mm. uh, a, a fireman mm. and, uh, and an actor. And, and an actor. And an actor. Well, I mean, I, I didn't want to on any like one day, but I, I often tell people about this sort of vague memory I have of, of 
sitting in a in a green room at the theatre when when mum was working and obviously you know didn't have childcare that night, so I was there with her. Uh, or for whatever reason, I don't know. Maybe I was working there. Um, <laughs> she put I, you I to was, work. I know. Child I was just sweeping the yes. stage. Um, <laughs> and sitting there like at night time, which is immediately cool. And all these grown ups milling about, like dressed up fantastically and laughing all the time and telling really cool stories and anecdotes and then going out and, and doing what I basically thought were fairy tales to hundreds of people, thousands of people every night and thinking, oh, this looks like quite a nice life. It's like quite a fun life. Um, and and then, of course, you know, much later do you realise that most actors are out of work most of the time and it's not like that all, all the time. <laughs> but when they're working, they're very happy. When, and, and I stand by that. I stand by that. I think when you're, when you're working in this job, it, it's the best job in the world, as is any right. job where if you're, if you're doing your hobby, if you're paid to do your hobby, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? Right, and then, of right. course, the, the the crushing pain that comes with not doing what you feel is the the, the thing you love more than anything else. Um, yeah, I mean that's very much built into me that feeling of like if I'm if I'm being paid to do my hobby, it's heaven, and and I think it it stops me from being too much of a moaner. Right. But this is probably not, I mean, you've been on some major shows, um, hobby. I wouldn't, now it's become more than, uh, it's not a hobby anymore. This Absolutely. Is like a real but, career. But, but, yeah. but, but, but still seeing it as a hobby is something that keeps oh, right. it um, fresh and enjoyable and, sure. and makes it never feel like a drag. It makes it never feel like, oh God, I've got to go to work. It's like, right. oh yeah, I get to go to the playground. How old were you when you were actually were sitting in the theater watching all these older people? Were you like I mean, five, I, six, I seven, probably, eight? I was probably about seven. Yeah. Wow. And I would, and I would do little. Um, they would sort of harvest the local the the town Stratford on Avon for for kid kids to play kid parts in the plays. You know, child at party in Romeo and Juliet, or like right. child who will inevitably die in some Ibsen play. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so I honed my craft playing those. And I, I would do them. You get you get like a bit of pocket money. You know, you get like. 12 pounds, which is what, like 15, 16 dollars a week or whatever, just like, right. and, and you think, oh, well, this is, you know, I'm a little kid and I'm, I'm making dollars. I'm making money. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, oh, these people do it all the time. So, right. <laughs> so yeah, I was probably about seven at the time. So then you went into acting school, you went through uh, high school and then you went on to college to act. And mm-hmm. then after that, then um, was it, D- difficult being like growing up because it's like my dad was Ben Kingsley and I, I think difficult is is not how I describe it I think um firstly I've never known anything else like he's just dad to me so right uh so I, I have no comparable um mm-hmm. but I I think I would be being disingenuous if I said that uh there were some some rooms some um auditions or or, or discussions that I've got into, um, I think I'd be disingenuous if I, if I said that there, that there weren't any that I got into because of my surname. Um, because I think it, that's inevitable. People are going to be curious as to see, you know, what does, what does the latest in this line of people with, with that, with that fruity name going to be like, so I think <laughs> I there's like some, that. it's a fruity name. It is a fruity name. I'm a fruity guy. And there, and there's some, so I think, so, you know, some doors may be opened, um, a little bit because of that, but I think on the flip side of that, um, there, there, there's, there's never a sense of sort of, there's no neutral, there's no like blank slate. There's no, uh, everyone, everyone's got either an opinion or an expectation, uh, good, bad, ugly, whatever uh, about dad. And therefore about me at the start of, of my career, like what's, you know, go on then. Um, What's it going to be like, or 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 maybe they think that you are limited by um, your background in some way. Right. So I think mm-hmm. that while while it probably um, piqued some people's curiosity in me, it may also have, have led people to be like, ah, well, you know, uh, I've just, I've made my mind up about him before I've really before I've really met him. So I I and in my in my um, young man's. Uh, neurosis i guess i was so <laughs> desperate to uh, i've got a different kind of neurosis now desperate to prove to myself really and everyone else that i was doing it for for my reasons that i was doing this job mm-hmm. because i wanted to do it because i was good mm-hmm. at it not 
not because I had a leg up, and I had this like phobia of anyone using the word favor around me. Um, oh yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Like I was just sure, sure. Um, just scared that people would would think that I had a leg up, um, an active leg up. Of course, there's like the the slight, there's the passive one of people being like, oh okay, yeah, there's a Kingsley, but an active one, and and um, because because Dad is not really one for nepotism in that sense. Firstly, I, I'm not really sure he'd know how to go about um, cheating the system to get me into it. Yeah, uh, he's just like he sees himself as a, as a jobbing actor like the rest of us. Um, I think if he knew how to use his powers for evil, he'd he'd be a straight on it. Um, <laughs> but I, but yeah, I, I, and also just for my own pride, I, I wanted to. I, I I thought I can't be going through this whole whole rigmarole and this, and this career which I want to be doing for a million years until they have to wheel me on and wheel me off. I can't go through that thinking I don't really deserve to be here because I because I'm only here because you know Dad set up some meeting. So I I would right. never let that happen. So. Um, I kind of pushed pushed against it for the first few years of my career of sort of uh, being a bit squeamish about acknowledging that that um, that dad is dad and and is brilliant and is mm-hmm. something actually to be celebrated and and one of the and he's one of the main reasons I do love what I do because you know our our, our um, common conversation points are, are the things that we love talking about. And the things that have always made me like grin and laugh throughout my childhood and my relationship with dad have been to do with storytelling and to do with silly voices and performance. And, and, um, and, and I, so I've learned to love that. That's great. You know, well, well, great. I've learned to be comfortable with loving it. I always loved right. it, but for a while I probably went, no, 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 no. I, I, I only like acting because, uh, I solved a riddle when I was young and uh, no one actually <laughs> talked to me about acting and I discovered it. In fact, I invented acting. Yes, uh, yes, you're the inventor. <laughs> yeah. Do you, what did, um, give me an example. Like, did your dad ever tell you like, okay, you're getting into acting. Here's a piece of advice. Like when you get into this, you yeah. should always do this or, um, you there know. Was, there was, uh, I mean, other than don't. <laughs> people always say that and i'm always like why do people say that like no he don't. didn't say, i guess he because didn't it's say hard he, he yeah he, he didn't he didn't say don't he he yeah. um he made sure in fact both my parents made sure that i knew that um it it is tough it's it's low it can be lonely mm. um for all sorts of reasons you know you can you can spend a lot of time on your own if you're working and you can feel very alone if you're not. Um, Mm -hmm. It can be tough on your mental health. It can be tough on your family and the people around you. And I was like, guys, I I know know, from a broken home, I get it. Um, (laughs) Right. You could talk Uh, about that. Yeah. You know about that. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But there, so, so uh, advice was, be you know be realistic and and know that for all the the brilliance of dad and his career um that's not normal you know that's that's not to be expected from a from an active right. career um that is that's winning the lottery mm-hmm. you know so so uh d- don't expect glor- glory in that in that sense in inverted commas um and just focus on telling the stories, even if it's to five people and a dog. That's 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 worthwhile. Um, both my parents believe very passionately in in um, in acting and actors and storytelling and theatre and and film and TV as really important mediums for well for humanity. In, in not wanting to sound too grandiose, but but. Um, in that sort of in dad sometimes talks about the 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 voices around the campfire you know like it, it it's sort of built into us as humans in a tribal sense to need to communicate through mm-hmm. metaphor through mm-hmm. uh shared storytelling through um sometimes telling a story that's ostensibly not about you but of course is unlocking something deep inside yourself um 
so that that is sort of part of human nature and is something to be really cherished. And uh, I guess one thing that they that that Dad really did drum into me is that you know while acting can be can be really therapeutic, mm-hmm. um, it shouldn't be treated as therapy. And I think mm-hmm. there's there's I think there's like a fine line which I mm-hmm. you know I I, I really agree with there i think it, you know the the process of as i've just said you know sharing stories and and going deep into yourself and into someone else and empathizing is very therapeutic and and expressing yourself um but if you'll go if you're doing it in order to um just just dig into yourself then who are you doing it for you're not doing right, it for, right th- then then that becomes therapy which is you may as well just do in the privacy of your own bedroom you know, right. that's, or go that's see it. your therapist. Yeah, or go yeah. see a therapist. Yeah. It's uh, right. the because then you're doing it on the audience's time, right? And you should be. And the act of performing is 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 an act of giving, in my opinion. Right. It's an act of right. unlocking, and it's an act of you know you sort of open your chest up and you go, look, it's here. It, here's me. Right. Here's what I'm struggling with. Here's what I'm trying to access. What about you? You know, here's some questions I'm asking you through doing it, or or here is a gift I'm giving you through laughter or whatever it is. But if you're just there, just sort of banging your chest and smacking your head against the wall going, I need to have feelings, then the audience are actually going to come away from it feeling a bit grossed out. Right. They're, like they don't, they're what going, are they getting on, from I'm, it? Exactly. They're like, I, I've yeah. just paid to watch you uh, essentially have a one-man therapy session. And right, that's, right. that's actually not very fulfilling. So, yeah, they, they weren't ever- really drawn down to you. Me. Did he ever give you advice like about like, okay, or even like your acting style, like what, like there's so many different styles. I don't know. A lot of people might know there's like Stanislavski, there's mm-hmm. Meisner, there's all mm-hmm. these different mm-hmm. types of things. When you get into a role, which we're going to talk about your role in Mank, like getting into that role, what do you do? Is there a certain technique you use? Is there something that you use to kind of get into that? Uh, no, there, there isn't. There isn't any one way, and I think that's kind of down for me. And I think that's down mm-hmm. to um, to my training. Actually, mm-hmm. at, at, at drama school at Guildhall, it was very. They were very sort of anti guru. Mm. Um, they would, you know, we'd be as you say, we were, we would study Stanislavski and Meisner and and all sorts and clowning and and you know the the techniques that go that have a name attached to them. Right. But right. we'd sort of, we'd sort of study them um, without going, you are now uh, at the altar in the church of Stanislavski or whatever. It, it was very much like everything, all those methods are streams that, that lead into one big river. So mm-hmm. take what you need when you need it. Um, and, and I think as a result, I, in in my career, I've sort of gone. Oh, I, I don't know what kind of actor I am, um, but I've grown comfortable with that actually because I think I I like being um, an adaptable actor that that has my, you know I've got my own set of um, approaches to stuff in terms of you know studying the text and mm-hmm. of, of working out my my actions and intentions and and obstacles and, and you know the, the basics like that. But beyond that, I like to. Um, I like to just collaborate and 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 enjoy the game of it, you know, the jeu, as some French directors would say. Uh, you know, the, what do the, they call it? The jeu, well, you know, le jeu, the game. Oh, le jeu. Oh, the uh, game. The game. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. Um, the, I'm learning a lot from you, Ferdy. Oh, I'm I'm I, I don't know if I've told you I'm fa- I'm very clever. I, yeah. uh, <laughs> I um, you no, are I'm amazingly so, clever. So, I mean, I, I sound myself. Yes, I yes. Um, so yeah, no. In, in terms of method, you know, between actors, I just like to um, to play the game and 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 give. If you if you give right. on stage or on set, you get. Um, yeah. But in terms of directors, I lo- I love to see uh, how they like to work. And of course, you know, D- David Fincher has a he has not a a sort of method, but he definitely has a, a work style. Um, which I think you, you've either got to uh, buy into and, and go um, and enjoy the ride and get stuck mm-hmm. in, or or you'll just be have a have a really grim time just because you'll just uh, everyone else will be flourishing and working hard and you'll just be sitting there going, well, I don't want to work hard, and and then you'll get <laughs> to the end of the job and go, oh, maybe I should have worked hard. 
because right. you know like the, if you if it feels a bit too much like hard work on a fincher set then you shouldn't be there because if fincher's going to make you work to your work hard yeah, yeah. he's going to make you work to the the best of your potential i think what was it like working with him uh i mean i loved it i was i was a a, a pig in shit um <laughs> For, for which he called me a, a, when I told him that I'd loved every second of it on the last day. He was like, well, you're a fucking masochist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's intensive rather than intense. Like you, 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 um, there are, I mean, he's, he's famous for doing a lot of takes as you know, you and many, many of your listeners might or might not know. Um, you know, he, he, he does a lot of takes, you know, sometimes 20, 30, sometimes 60, 70 of a shot. Really? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, and a lot. Like a small take, like what we're going to see in, in like in the upcoming film, like it's tons of takes. Yeah, but he'll, but he, he likes to run the whole scene wherever possible. So if it's a four or five minute scene, you will do, and that's per camera angle, you know, so you'll be spending a couple of days on a four, four minute scene easily. Um, oh my god! Because you, you're doing it over and, and, and there's a sort of graph of, um, I don't know, my mental state working on a way you start out like, great, I can do this. I can do five of these. And he's giving you four or five notes after each take. And then after a while you start going, okay, can, can I, can I take on all, board all these notes? Because I'm now up to about 30 notes on this one. I'm trying to process them all. I can't possibly oh be doing gosh. any, anything good because I'm, uh, I'm just making noises out of my mouth and I don't know if they're good ones. And then you just sort of the graph comes back up and you're like, Oh, I think I'm. I think I'm playing something that we talked about about two hours ago. This is brilliant. And then by the end, you're like, I don't think I'm acting, but it's it's in there somewhere. And and then his last note on the last couple of takes is always uh, just do it faster and simpler. Just you know, just throw away everything that I've that we've talked about and just just oh. go back to the basics and do it quickly and simply. Um, so that's what I mean about you know if you if you if you decide that that's not for you um, and you just want to get it done in one or two takes, you're going to have a horrible time. Wow. But, that's intense. But if you just go, right, I'm going to, I'm, I'm running this marathon. You know, this is a long mm-hmm. distance. This is a long distance run. Um, and I'm going to go for it and I'm going to come out the other side a bit fitter. Then you have a great time. And I, I absolutely loved it. Aren't you exhausted after like 60 takes? Yeah, you are. But it's that good you're exhausted. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's but good. it's that really... Because it's like, it, it feels like that exhausted that you feel when you've done like some really hard workout or something like that, where you go, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm drained, but I feel stronger now. Right. And I know that. It's like uh, working out, I've, right? Yeah, totally. And I know, yeah. and you feel, and as a result, I, I went home, well, went back to the hotel, the end of work every day, feeling like just that little bit better at my job than I'd started the day, which is, a, which is such a nice feeling, isn't it? You know, when you, wow. you know, when you, when you, um, if in anything, if you, if you finish a, a part of a project and you feel like you might be a little bit better at it than you were right. at the start, then that's a really nice feeling. Did you do, so let's talk about, we're talking about Mank because this mm. is the, the film that's coming up um, on Netflix. It doesn't come out till, December. So, um, you'll be able to hear this and you'll be able to see, um, you in this. So did you do a lot of scenes? Was it with Gary Oldman or um, yeah, most, with a most lot of, the of other? My, yeah. Most of my, um, stuff is with Gary and, uh, and the remainder of it is mostly with Arliss Howard who plays Louis B. Mayer, who's absolutely oh. wonderful as well. But yeah, most, most of my, um, s- scenes are, I mean, Gary's in base, Gary Oldman's in basically every shot in the film. Um, so most of my stuff is is sort of duologues with him, is, is one-on-ones with him. Um, and he's, Gary's fab. He's, and he's, he's just feels like one of us, you know, he's, he's just, he's incredibly, this shouldn't be extraordinary, but it is. He's, he's, he's very normal. He, you know, first day of rehearsals, he just comes over and he's like, hello mate, how are you doing? What's, how's everyone at home? What's going on? Um, you know, how are you holding up? How are you feeling? I'm feeling nervous. Are you feeling nervous? He's, oh, he 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 said, "I'm feeling nervous." Well, I think he's just he's very honest. It's like getting you know, started with a new project. And, yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah, you know, first, yeah, first day yeah. of school feeling. Um, right, right, right. And he's starting there's something. no yeah, and there's no sense of him. Um, he doesn't behave like his his process is anything mysterious. He's just really extremely good at his job. 
and uh, awesome. and when he and when he struggles with it, he's he makes no um, secret of that. You know, if he if he's not getting if he's he's not getting to the place he wants to get, it's just like the rest of us. He's like, oh come on, man, we can do this. He's not sort of um, sitting in the corner doing some mysterious process that no one's allowed to be part of. He's right, just really right. great. And, oh, that's uh, cool. and I think he's in a, you know, he's in a, in a happy place in himself. And, and I think, um, out of a happy place always comes good work. Yeah. Does, when you guys are working on the set together, does he ever say to you, you know, Ferdinand, could you give me more of blah, 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 or it doesn't work like that. Is that more of um, David Fincher or the... Yeah, I mean, Finch is the 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 tweaker in that regard. Um, yeah, Gary's he's uh, he's just there. He's just there giving, like you know, giving the thumbs up, giving more, or saying, you know, it, it, he might say, you know, how how do you think? You know, what do you think about us doing, having a look here, or you know, a little inflection there, or whatever? But it's um, he he would never direct me even though he's right, right. he's a he's a really good director in his own right right um, you know he, he can he can do it nil by mouth is an amazing wow and um, that's cool but he is he's, he's really generous really really generous yeah. and he's a generous he's a generous actor and he's a generous person it sounds like i mean that's truly what the acting process the more you give the more you get back the more wonderful it is for the people to watch it i think right? so and i, I think mean, it's like yeah. i mean i i pretty i I assume it's not dissimilar in um, in your work. I mean, I, I feel like in most things in life, the more we give, the more we get. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, if you if you sit back and just wait for everything to come to you, it's actually ultimately unfulfilling, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's totally. Yeah. I mean, it really is in the way. But I think a lot of times, what happens in the world, we start getting very focused on me. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, we think, yeah. oh, what about me? And, uh, you know, and my pain and my struggle and my, and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I think it's normal, natural, yeah, stuff. But um, do you still, just out of curiosity, do you still audition for things or do people go, oh, God, yeah. oh Ferdinand, I <laughs> love him. Bring him in. Give, mean, him. give him this part. He's fabulous. I mean, I would love to. I mean, should we just say for the sake of yes, our discussion let's just say that everyone this, just. You don't yeah. ever audition. If you want you me, and come Brad to me. Pitt. You know, you know where to find me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I absolutely. I, my, my process for choosing a role uh, mainly revolves around um, please, can I audition for it? <laughs> and, um, and then please, can you give me a chance to do it? <laughs> and then please don't fire me. Yeah. Don't fire me at all. Yeah. Please God, do my best job. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Um, I see you. I'm just looking at your guitars behind you. Um, do you play guitar? I do. I mean, they're, they're reasonably neglected. Actually, there's, there's two or three more. Uh, how many are in this room? There's four guitars in this room. Um, they're reasonably neglected. I, I used to play a lot of guitar. Um, I play less now, but I love it. Uh, I but I do. I'm music is my other outlet, so I, I produce a lot of music, um, and and yeah, I strum away on the guitar. Like as well. what I'm, kind of music? Uh, terrible music, mainly. No, I um, really. No, 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 no. I, I all sorts. I've produced for. Uh, I've produced for singer songwriters and bands. But um, when I'm working on my own projects, it tends to be more um, electronic stuff. And I work with uh, a friend of mine who's a musician and, uh, I guess, a, and a poet who oh. he writes sort of long, long form um, po- poetry that's sort of thematically linked. So we, we're working towards putting a sort of semi-concept record together, which is exciting. It's one of those things that during this car crash of a year has been strange because I started out with such good discipline and, you know, I'd wake up and do my like 7am yoga, do like Mm. loads of exercise, get creative, do do loads of writing, do loads of reading, do loads of music. And then um, just pandemic fatigue started to set in as I think has. And then here we are. And and I've just sort of um, just found myself occasionally sitting, looking out the window being like, oh, a day has happened. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> and here I am looking and out the window. Here I am staring out the window. And scene. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. So can we hear your music anywhere or no? Not yet? Um, 
uh, I mean, in in the past, there's 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 things out there that I've worked on, definitely. But um, this this new project, no, not yet. Not yet. Oh, not yet. that's interesting. Wow. Um. Okay. So I want to ask you because can you believe we're almost out of time, and I feel like we're just getting I started. I refuse. Yeah, I'm not stopping. We're just going <laughs> to plow through, and it's just going to be what it is. Um. Yeah. I just happened to see those guitars and it just draw me. I could not um, <laughs> say. So who knows what, maybe next time you'll play us a song. Yeah. Next time we'll have a whole light show. We'll have smoke machines. It'll be very dramatic. <laughs> that would be lovely. I would love it <laughs> yeah. all right there. Um, tell me, because we talk about fashion on the show, when mm. you get ready for like red carpet and stuff like that, what do you say your style is? Like you're a stylish guy. You're kind of a cool vibe. Like, you know, you. I'm gonna I'm gonna record know. a clip of you saying that. It's gonna be my it ringtone when whenever anyone rings me. Just hear you going, "You're a stylish guy." Um, You're a stylish guy. I I mean, I, it's my my style. I mean, I describe it reluctantly as um, I mean, it's it's erratic, like every, like a lot of people's is. It it's so tied to my mood and and how I'm feeling about myself. You know, if it's a crap day, I find myself, and I really want to change this about myself, I find myself actively choosing clothes I hate. <laughs> really? just, I sort of, well, I'll go through yeah. my wardrobe and be like, yeah. no, those, those clothes are too nice, too nice for you to wear. Oh. You don't deserve to wear nice I'm going to punish today. myself today. Yeah, I know, it's terrible. And they're not even, I don't even mean expensive by nice. I just mean like, oh, you know, they, they fit you too well. You should wear, you should wear your mm. bad trousers today. Um, mm. This but is gonna I, we'll get I, into therapy then after yeah, this. Please We're gonna do. talk about that. Something I, deep. Yeah. Um I I I love fashion. I'm not as concerned with um with like what is most current about fashion. I mm-hmm. I like for me it's I mean it sounds obvious, but it's all about fit for me. It's I yeah. I I'm quite a skinny mini. I'm quite a skinny boy with quite broad shoulders, and there are um Sim- straight lines work well on me. So I, I yeah. really like, um, uh, I, I love simplicity in fashion. Um, uh, and, um, yeah, simplicity is kind of what I, is what I go for, um, uh, for, for an event. Generally, I like, uh, clean lines. Yeah. Um, a, a sort of classic, uh, classic template, but maybe with, mm-hmm. um, something that that reminds me that um that it's me underneath you know something if if it's if it's some absolutely gorgeous double-breasted suit then i might want to wear one of my favorite t-shirts or or something like that or or a pair of really lovely trainers sneakers um so something that that, cool. that reminds me that that the really fancy part is is kind of costume as it were um, but that, that, uh, there's a bit that goes with it. That's always going to be me and that I don't. And also that reminds me that, um, that any, any glitz that goes with this, with the, with being fortunate enough to be in stuff that has glitz attached to it, yeah. um, is, uh, is not everything like it's great and it's wonderful and it should be enjoyed and it should be celebrated. Um, but it, but, but, but when I dress up for something, I am sort of reminding myself that, yeah, this is part of, um, this is a game in itself. Like this is, uh, not, this is not, re- um, real life. Don't almost. take it too serious. Don't take like, it too seriously. Serious. Like right, it's, right. it's not, um, this isn't real life for most people. Like I, right. I think that, I think the, the moment, the moment I get, uh, used to or blase about or tired of or bored of all that stuff will be the moment I should stop doing this job because mm, I think you yeah. should, I think you should be um, aware of how wonderful and ridiculous and not normal it is at all times. And I think, I think if you uh, start going, Oh, it's just another bloody red carpet and <laughs> oh, just, you know, put some tuxedo on me, you know, just I deserve it. I, this is, I, I am right. entitled to this. Then you know, get lost, give it to someone who's desperate to do it because right. you should, That's... I think you should have a sort of childlikeness approach to yeah. fashion. Uh, as I, I think you do, you know, it's like there's glee in it. There's absolute joy yeah. in it and it's, yeah. it's expression. Um, 
Yeah, that's that was quite that's a roundabout cool. roundabout answer to your question. No, about that's good. That's questions. good. I have some quick questions to ask. Uh, I'm yeah, going to shoot them off really quick because I know we got to end soon. And um, what is one thing I always like to ask people? What's one thing you've never told anybody? It doesn't uh, have to be like crazy personal. If you want to get personal, you can, <laughs> yeah. then it, um, it'll be personal with me and you and the world. And the or world. it could be, or, or just us. It'll just be. The, um, I think actually what I just uh, blurted out to you a couple of minutes ago would kind of be my, my answer to that. In that I, well, actually, no, I, I've not Something that never people said don't know anyone, about you. Oh, yeah. I don't know, but I think, I think I'm very good at brave, brave facing, you know, putting on a brave face uh, and, and I've been exceptionally good at it this year. Um, but I think possibly to my own detriment, I think uh, I, I was the person at the beginning of this who to my friend just going, look, this is going to take us a while. It's going to be a year of uh, at least of this pandemic, you know, Mr. Know it all going, it's going to be, it's going to be, even if they find a vaccine now, going to take a while to <laughs> get it into mass production and safety chain and all that. Um, but I, I have, uh, I, I, I think I'm a little bit worried about the effect that this year has had on my brain. Um, I, I, I feel that it's sort of slightly softened it. it it's slightly <laughs> blunted. What does that mean, my, softened? Well, I, I think it's the wrong word to use, but I think um, my attention span is has been damaged by this year. I think. <laughs> My um, discipline has taken a hit. I uh, think my well, willpower is similar to discipline. I think, yeah, so I mean, I, I think it's just something that I, I, I don't say out loud that much is that um, while I've been, I think I've been, done a really good job of surviving the, mm-hmm. um, the, sh- the shit storm of the year, um, okay. I am actually a little bit... Uh, not dreading, but I'm um, a bit anxious about what what version of me is going to come out of it the other side. How's that? Well, you have a good thing coming out of the other side, which is Mank. So that's pretty good, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. You have it's, a movie coming it's, out. It's an amazing thing to uh, okay to have coming up. You know, yeah. the, to have to have to have made it before the world as we knew it stopped and to know that it was, that it's going to come out and be in people's homes during it is, um, is such a gift and it's been something to hold on to. Absolutely. To go, look, you're in something you can be really proud of. Yeah. That's something you could come out of. Uh, You're going to say you came out of this. Um, Can I ask you one last thing? And then Mm. I promise I will wrap up. Mm. Can you talk um, American? Like if they're like, Hey, um, Ferdy, we want you to talk just like an American dude. Yeah, I mean, my my, I'm playing an American in the movie. Oh, you have no? Can you give me a non-American accent, or I mean, an American accent? No, no, okay. I'm not your, I'm not your clown. I do not do this. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, I like, I like to play. I always love British accents. I love like, uh, and then I see so many people that go. Um, and then they switch over to um, just like an American, you yeah. know. Uh, but well, I tell you, one of, one of the well, so I'm yeah, I'm playing Irving Thalberg in the movie, who is who was uh, very much a, an American. Um, uh, and I, I keep, I, I would always when I was getting into his voice, um, I would always repeat one of my lines, which is, uh, "I know what I am, man." I just don't know why I would always just say that to myself because it's, it's one oh, of the things. that would get you back in it? Yeah. I just, not even just for, for the character as well as the voice, but there is just, there's just, the, it, that's part of a speech that I have in, in the film. Um, when I'm sort of, well, Gary, Gary's character and I are, are uh, confronting each other about our beliefs and our morals, um, and how we use our power. And, and that line, I, I know what I am, Meg is something that I just oh, kept sort cool. of saying under my breath to myself for a, for a take. You have been so giving. Thank you so much, Ferdy, for being Thank on for my show. Me, it's I've so cool. It. I'm so excited to see your movie. Thank um, you. There's so many great things coming. I'm excited. I could talk to you for another hour. Well, let's, let's do it again else. sometime. Let's do it again. Why not? Why not? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. We'll be back in touch. And uh, thanks for being on my show. Brilliant. Enjoy the movie. Thank you. See you. Cheers, Jeff. 
Thanks for listening to The Cat's Walk. Make sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app. This has been a production of Evergreen Podcast. A special thank you to executive producer Gerardo Orlando, producer Leah Longbreak, and audio engineer Dave Douglas.